tongues and you want to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. So first, today, I want to talk to you, Holy Spirit is who? Who is Holy Spirit? The moment I say Holy Spirit, what do you think? What comes into your mind? Yeah, God. God, okay, very good. That's a good answer. Many people think Holy Spirit means oh, like you know, doing something or speaking in tongues, something like a power comes to you. Oh. No, sometimes it does happen, okay? There is a manifestation which happens to you, but that's not the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is God. And exactly what Dhanu uh, said, the Holy Spirit is nothing but He is God. It's not a power, it's not something which comes to you and makes you to do something which you don't like. You know, many people do certain things and then they say, God, you know, Spirit told me to do this, Spirit, Holy Spirit. No, 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 it is not. Holy Spirit is God. Our God is Trinity. Three God in one. That's the kind of thing. Okay? Yeah, immediately we come. How come three gods? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So it must be three persons. No, no, no. It is one God manifesting in three different ways. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. Today we have got Murugan and Babi. Okay? That's a good example I can tell you. For Murugan, for Babi, Murugan is Father, Elder. Okay? That's Father. For his wife, he is husband. That's a comforter. That's like a spirit. For his mother, he is a son. Is Buru is three person or one person? Then, but we call him, somebody calls him father, someone calls him son, someone calls him husband. You see, God manifesting in three different ways. If you read in the throughout the Bible, you will find God manifests either as God or as a spirit or as a son. But there are some places you will find all three of them together. In the Old Testament, if you take Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, you see in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The Spirit of God was hovering on the surface of the earth. Then God said, we know John 1 1, the word was God. God said, the word was God. So, there you see Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But we need to know God in the Old Testament, He manifested Himself as God, the, as the Lord God, the Yahweh, the Jehovah. But in the New Testament, how did Jesus, how did God manifest? As Jesus, He came in the flesh as Son. In the Old Covenant, He is God. People were terrified to go before God. Because we are all sinners, we are holy God. When you go into the presence of the holy God, when a sinful person comes and he dies. It's not like today we come to church, we sing songs, we say every move I make in you, we make a move, we do, we sing, we enjoy doing all those things. But in the Old Testament, about 3,000, 4,000 years before, when Moses called for a prayer meeting, everybody was shivering. Oh no, we have to go. We are going to go to the tabernacle. We do not know who is going to come alive, who is going to die. People were very, very scared to come before God. So God came down in flesh 
as his son Jesus and he came and he died for us and then he said I will give you the Holy Spirit. Uh, turn with me to John chapter 14. Every one of you open your Bibles. I want you all to read this there. We can read it together. John 14. Verse 15, 16, 17 and 18. John 14. John chapter 14. Verses 15 to 18. This is, as you turn, I will tell you, this is Jesus before going to the cross, before he is going to die, he is uh, saying this to his disciples, this is what is going to happen. Okay? Shall we read it together? John 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Let's read. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. Amen. Jesus is saying, if you love me and if you keep my commandments, I will pray to the Father and he will give you the Holy Spirit. He didn't say, I will give you power. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8 it says, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you shall receive power. But what you are receiving is a person. What you are receiving is a person. The word it says, I will give you a comforter or helper. You know, I pray that he will give you another comforter. That's how the English has been translated. In the Greek, it is called Alos Paraclitos. Alos means Someone like the same nature, the same abilities, the same qualities. Everything will be the same. Allah speaks what? Everything will be the same. So Jesus is saying, I am not going to be here with you physically. Like how you see me physically here. You are not going to see me physically. And I am going to go, I am going to die, and I am going to go to my father. But my father is going to give you somebody almost like me. He's the same. He's going to give you the comforter. Parakletos. In Greek, parakletos has got seven meanings. One is comforter. Second is counselor. Third is helper. Fourth is an advocate. The other one is strengthener. Standby and intercession. Seven meanings. Okay? Say it with me. Comforter. Come on. I can speak so loud to you. So many of you are there. You can't speak even my match my voice. Comforter. Counselor. Helper. Intercession. Advocate. Strengthener. Stand back. What a wonderful God you see. He comforts you. He gives you the counseling. He gives you the idea. And He helps you. And He advocates. He speaks on behalf of you. And He strengthens you when you, when you cannot. Like, you know, you feel like stretching, you feel like you can't do anything. He strengthens you. And He is stand by. You know, one of the amazing things what God has given. He says, if you love me and keep my commandments, I will give you. The, the God is living inside of you. <coughs> Let me, I, I have to share this also so that you understand. I am Abraham, right? I, who I am, I am. I am I'm a spirit, and I am a soul, I am a physical body. You are seeing me, my physical body. 
In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 very clearly says that you are a spirit, soul and body. We are all three persons. Okay? Even we have got three persons. Yeah, it is very interesting, right? I'll, I'll teach you some other time, but I have to tell you so that you understand how you receive the Holy Spirit. I have got a physical body. Okay, you all have got a body, so you know one is very clear. The second one is you have got a mind. You got a mind. That is soul. You, you all got a thinking. You can think, you can got a soul. You got a soul. The third is the spirit. That what you have inside of you. That is where you don't find the difference. You are not able to differentiate the soul and the spirit. We all have our soul and spirit. When you die, you leave your body and go. Okay. Let me just hold this thought. You are a spirit, soul and body. Okay. <coughs> God says, before you were created in your mother's womb, I know you. Right? Before even you were created in your mother's womb, before you were born, God has seen it. What did God see? So the spirit. God saw you in spirit. We are a spirit being going through this human experience. That's what it is. We are going to live for 90 years or 100 years or at the maximum 120 years on this earth. When we die, we leave this body and go. But when we go to the other side, we can know each other. It's a little weird, right? How will I know you? I know. Uncle like this, auntie like this, brother like this, sister like that. But if they leave the body and go, how will I know? We will know. Because we are a spirit being. We are not, that's why we need to understand this. Because when the Holy Spirit comes to you, the Holy Spirit not comes to you primarily on your body, it comes to you on your spirit. Not on your soul, not on your body, but in your spirit, that spirit life has to overflow in your mind, in your physical bodies. So then Jesus says, I will give you another comforter. When the Holy Spirit comes to you, there is no difference happens to you in your body. You don't become taller, you don't become a shorter, you don't become bigger or you don't become thin. Nothing happens to you in your body. But what happens is, your spirit becomes alive. You become alive in your spirit. That is why, when the Holy Spirit comes to you, you will have life. The eternal life. You know, our spirit and the soul, they are going to live. But this body may not. I was like you, guys, you know. It was like yesterday, I was like you. But today I see I'm, I'm, I'm being a bit old. And after some time, after a few years, I will be dead and gone. But you will come to that level. But what happens when we live, when we go through this life, we need to know God has designed that we live with Him. Because it says, you see the verse 16, I'll give you another helper that He, that He means who? Holy Spirit. It doesn't say it. You understand? Holy Spirit is He. If you have a Bible, you look at it. In he, Hajj is in capital. That is to show it is God. If you read, if you see in your English Bible, the he, Hajj is in capital. That is the Holy Spirit is he. It's a person. It's not a power. It's not some force. 
Now some people think, oh, spirit of God, God, oh, oh, no. It is God. We need to realize that. He may abide with you. What is the last said word? Forever. Forever means, what is the meaning? Forever. Yeah. Eternity. Yeah. Always. So, you mean to say, when you come and stand there and sing three songs, Oh, Spirit of God, move in me. Then only the Spirit moves and then after you go out, you play with your friends and then run around. That Spirit of God goes for a while. No. What the, that's what you guys need to realize that the Spirit of God comes and He lives with you forever, for eternity He will live with you. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 says that's a deposit what God has given you for the inheritance to come. So what happens? The Holy Spirit comes to you and the Holy Spirit lives with you forever. Irrespective of how many days you are going to live, how long you are going to live on this earth, or beyond the earth, the Holy Spirit will always live with you. Hallelujah. So when the God comes to you, people think, oh, I made a small mistake. What happens? Is the God leaves him go? No. He lives with you forever. He lives with you forever. Ever. That's what the Holy Spirit is. He is not taking a last week you had an after. Okay, today is the last day of your after. So you didn't go to school or you didn't go to your college. Does that mean Holy Spirit also has after? No. No holiday. Every day, 24 7, 365 days. It, for eternity, the God is going to live with you. Because this you need to realize in the Old Testament when people wanted to go to God they were scared. And also in the Old Testament when you want to be with God you have to go to the temple to be with God. Here what happens God comes to you. God comes to you and he lives inside of you. So you become the temple of the living God. Hallelujah. So you become the temple of the living God and God comes and lives inside of you. You don't have to go to the church. You don't have to go to some building. You don't have to do anything to be with God. So immediately you will think, praise the Lord, why should I come to church? <laughs> because God lives inside of me. I don't have to come to church. We come to church to learn more about Him, to encourage one another and have fellowship with one another. That is why the church is. So when you go through some difficulty, someone else will come along and say, don't worry, I will pray for you. And other person says, come, let's all sit, let's all do something together. Let us help somebody, let us have fellowship together. That is why we come to church. We don't come to church only to be, we come here to worship him, we come here to learn more about him, but you are the temple of the living God. When the Holy Spirit comes to you, you become the temple. So God lives inside of you. You know, the same chapter, you see in verse 20. Or 25, you see, these things I have spoken to you, you being present with you. But the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you to remembrance all things I have said to you. Oh, verse 23. Look at verse 23 first, then before we go in there. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our own with Him. See, if you love God, what Jesus is saying, okay guys, I'm going to die, you don't see me. But if you love me and keep my commandments, my Father 
will love you and we will go Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. We will come and we will come to you and we will make our home in you. God wants to come and live inside of each and every one of us. So the Holy Spirit is none other than God himself is coming. It's, it's Holy Spirit is God coming and living inside of you. So please, you know, you need to get this very clear. If you don't get this, then what happens? You will think, you will look at, you will go to somewhere and you will see somebody is speaking in so you will also think if the Holy Spirit comes, I will also have to jump. Or somewhere you will go, when the Holy Spirit comes, they will be rolling over the floor. So you will think immediately, I have to roll over the floor. No, it is not. It may, some people may react a different way. It is God coming on to you. Don't think I am making fun of any one of them. But what I am trying to tell you is, He is God. And the Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. He is a gentle God. What is the difference between the Holy Spirit coming and the evil spirit coming? Because you need to understand. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He will tell you to do something and it is your responsibility to do or not to do. But the evil spirit force you to do something which you don't like. The Holy Spirit is possess you. People will go on, on, you know, all kinds of things. Have you seen? Yeah, they do all kinds of funny stuff. But the Holy Spirit is God. It's a Holy Spirit. Holy. So the Holy Spirit makes you, He tells you what to do and only you will do. It's very rarely you will find the Holy Spirit forces you to do something. The something forces you to do something is not the Holy Spirit, it is some other spirit. Because here it says, if you love me and keep my commandments and we will come, and we will make our home in you. You know, it's, it's very, very clear. Jesus said, you know, for some time you will see me, after some time you won't see me. Because he was going to the cross. Uh, let's come to the next verse, verse 17, John 14, 17. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. He dwells with you and he will be in you. That's what the Holy Spirit does to you. He will dwell with you and he will be in you. And the next one says, I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. Jesus is saying, I am going to go die. You know, after Jesus spoke this, he went to the cross and he died. So how will you know him now? Because he says, I will come and I will live with you. And he says, I will not leave you orphans. What is the difference between orphan and a son or a daughter? It's not a, such a complicated question. What is the meaning of an orphan? Someone doesn't have anybody. Parents or he doesn't have anybody. He is an orphan. But Jesus is saying, you will not be an orphan. So what is he saying? You will be belong to the family of God. <clears throat> you won't be an orphan. You have got a father. You have got a new family now. 
when you receive the Holy Spirit, God is saying that I will come and live with you and I will live in you and you will not be an orphan and I am your father. I am your heavenly father. That's what God is saying. That I will be you and I will live inside of you and you will be my children. In you know, the Romans 8, 14, it says, For as many of us are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. In John 1, 12, it says, For those who received him, he has given them the authority to be called the sons of God. So if you have received God, if you have received the Holy Spirit, what happens? Though you have got earthly parents, now you are connected to a different family that family is in heaven, that father is our heavenly father and we have got a Holy Spirit living, living inside and we are connected to a new family. That is why we are born again Christians. Physically, you are born to your parents. But spiritually, you are born to the family of God. That's a big shift takes place here. You know, in our baptism, as I told you, you, none of you, had the opportunity to choose your parents. No one had an opportunity. I know some of you may be thinking, if I wish I had that, I would have born in this. No, no, no. God knew exactly where you had to be born. Why you look this, this way? Why you can't be different? You know, you can think all those things. I wish I only little taller, I wish I am little shorter, or whatever it may be. No. Everything God has created, you, you had no choice. Did any of you choose your parents? You are thinking very deep. No, none of us. But we have been given an opportunity to choose into be born into God's family. So when we are born again, when we receive God, Holy Spirit, we are born, we are connected into an another family, that is the heavenly family, the heavenly father has become your father and you are connected with him and you are the sons and the daughters of the most high God and he lives with you. So the Holy Spirit, is nothing but God. You will see many evidences. In Acts chapter 4, you know this, uh, Acts chapter 4 and uh, Acts chapter Ananas and Sapphira, Acts chapter 5. You will see in Acts chapter 5, they will say the Ananas and Sapphira, they will come and they will come to uh, give the money. They will take a little bit of money and they will, pay, they will come and tell a lie. Peter will tell you, how can you tell a lie to God, the Spirit? So the Bible calls Holy Spirit as God. Jesus calls He the God and we will come together and live in Him. So first and foremost, before you understand the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I know some of you are so excited. I want to speak in tongues. I want to heal people. I want to deliver people. I want to do this. It's all good. Yes. But you need to know it is not a magical word. You know, it's not like a Harry Potter movie. Immediately something happens. No. It is God. He is God. Holy Spirit is God. It's not something we, you know, immediately think, oh, no, not like that. It is God. Uh, take your Bibles, come to Luke chapter 11, and we will read one verse, Luke 11, verse 13, and we will pray, we finish with prayer. Come. Luke 11, verse 13. Luke chapter 11. Verse 13. Shall we read it together? This is in context. Um, Jesus is saying, if you want something, you keep asking. If you want to find something, you keep knocking. 
and then he gives it this one. Okay, shall we read? Verse 13. Oh. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them, those who ask Him? What does this the verse say simply? Understanding? If anyone wants to have the Holy Spirit, if you ask, if you ask, He will give. If you ask, you will receive. All you need to say is, God, I need the Holy Spirit. In your words, you say that if anyone asks of God, God, give me the Holy Spirit. He will give the Holy Spirit. Lord, I want the Holy Spirit. I want you in my life. And I want you. The coming weeks, we will look at, you know, what will the Holy Spirit will do, how the, we can live in the Holy Spirit, how we can understand the gifts of the Spirit, all those things we will study in detail. But this week, I want you to understand what is the one message you are going to take from here. Holy Spirit is God. God. Exactly. Well done. Thank you. Holy Spirit is God. And He is a comforter. He is a counselor. He is a helper. He is an intercessor. He is an advocate. He is a strengthener. He is your standby. All the things, whatever you need in your life, and God living in you. And instead of you going to the temple, you become the temple of God and you are going to carry the presence of God. Now, I want you to close your Bible, stand, you are going to pray.